Hello everybody, welcome to part 8 of this Farming Plots tutorial. Hopefully this will be the last video in this series. In the previous part of this tutorial, we created this script right here called Call Inventory. Right now, it's not in use because we have to create a parent script. I'm gonna call this script... Sort... Harvest. This is the script that will give the character the item when they harvest the vegetable or fruit. Let's go to script branch sort. Plant temp plant type. Right inside of that branch, we're gonna go to script branch Apply if 3. 3 is a mushroom. So if the item is a mushroom, then data system database number for variable. We want the item number for a mushroom. So uh, it should look something like this. Variable item number record item mushroom go to script call script call inventory and you know what i just realized i made a mistake i i named it call inventory when it should have been check inventory, but you know what? That's not a big deal. <laughs> Let's go to script branch condition flag have space on Okay, so this is how this is how it is. This right here is checking to see if it's a mushroom, and if it is, it's gonna get the item number for mushroom. The reason why we need that information is because when we call this script right here, it's going to check to see if we have inventory space for the mushroom. And then if we do, the flag called have space will be turned on, and then this script is gonna say is have space on. If it is, go to script branch condition, flag, bag slash target. We're going to check to see if bag slash target is off. If it is, then that means the bag takes the item. So party, possessions, item, add, mushroom. Quantity 1. We're gonna copy this condition right here and paste it right down here. Right after condition end, but you're you're still inside of this condition right here. Have space. So it should be right there. You're gonna paste it. And instead of bag slash target equals off, it's gonna be bag slash target equals on. So if that's the case, then that means the target gets the item. So go to data, target, target, like I said in the previous episode, is the character. So the character gets the item. Uh, go to basic info, item, mushroom, add. And then right after condition end, right before branch end, we're gonna put script branch to end, and I'm also gonna put a divider after that. Now what you're gonna do is copy everything, I guess from the divider all the way up to apply if number is three. You're gonna copy all of that, go all the way down to the bottom, Right after, after the divider, right before branch end, you're going to paste all of that. 
And you're going to change the value, so instead of apply if 3, it's going to say apply if 4. 4 is a turnip, so the second line is going to say item number turnip. And then down here where it says mushroom plus 1, we're going to change that to turnip, and you're going to do the same thing for this down here. Also, if you want to... Well, okay, first of all, you're gonna... You're gonna keep doing that for, for as many... Vegetables, different kinds of plants and vegetables and fruits as you have. I only have two, so I have two bodies of scripts. I mean, uh, not scripts, uh, code. Two bodies of code here. Uh, but if you want to, you can create a third option for the dead plant. So if the plant dies, you can still uh, harvest the plant, but instead of harvesting a healthy vegetable, you would be harvesting a dead plant. I'm gonna paste that down here. So what I what I dis did just now is I copied all this. You're gonna paste it after the divider. And you're going to change apply if to 50. 50 is the dead plant. I don't know if you remember. 50 in this case is the dead plant. We don't have a dead plant, so I'm going to have to create one. So in order to do that, I would have to exit out of the script editor by... Uh, I'm going to save that. Exit out of there, go to items, game items. What you can do is create something called Dead Plant. You don't have to fiddle with the Custom tab or the Advanced tab because the Dead Plant isn't going to do anything. It's not going to... It's not going to be worth anything, so we don't have to change the value of that, unless you want to. But otherwise, we created a totally useless item that doesn't do anything, and then we can go into Scripts, Sort Harvest, and then change database number for variable. You're going to change this item to dead plant. You don't have to do all of this, but you can if you want to. It's optional. I think it just makes the game a little bit more... fun, I guess. Even though the dead plant isn't worth anything and doesn't do anything, I think it's still kind of cool that you can harvest it anyway. That should be it for this script. Now we're going to create a new script called Seed Harvest 1. You're going to create one of these scripts for every single dirt event that you have. It's going to say script branch condition flag harvestable 1 equals on. It's checking to see if the plant is harvestable. And then data variable. It's going to say temp plant type equals dirt one. So we're getting the type of plant from dirt one. We're going to call sort harvest, which is the script that we just created. And then we're going to create a condition that's going to say flag have space equals on. So what this is doing is it's It's going through to see what kind of plant it is, and it's checking to see if we have space in our inventory. If we do, it's going to give us the item. This condition right here is checking to see if we had space for that, and if we did, then that most likely means that we received an item 
And if we received an item, that means there there should be no plant on the dirt plot. And if there if there isn't any plant on the dirt plot, then that means that we have to refresh all of the values, all of the variables and flags. So for for example, data flag harvestable one would be turned off because the plant is no longer harvestable because you already harvested it, if that makes any sense. And there's some other things we have to change too, like data flags watered one. That will be turned off as well. And we have to reset variables such as dirt one, so data variable Dirt1 equals zero. You're gonna copy that, paste it. And we also have to reset days past one to zero. And then event. Let me see. Events affects model. You're gonna change it to none. So the model pretty much disappears from the game. And then event, movement, vertical move. I'm going to move it up to 48, although I don't think it really matters. Just as long as you move it far enough away from the dirt event. The reason why we do this is because the seed is right on top of the dirt. Once we harvest the, the plant, the seed event is still on top of the dirt, and if we were to hoe the soil, we wouldn't be able to because the game thinks that we're trying to interact with the seed event and not the dirt event. So in order to make sure that that bug doesn't happen, we have to move the seed event away from the dirt event, if that makes any sense. Basically, if we didn't have this line of code right here, it just means that we wouldn't be able to hoe the soil a second time if we wanted to. We're gonna save that. What you're gonna do is copy this seed harvest one and paste it for as many dirt events as you have. I only have two, so I'm just gonna create two of these. And when you do that, make sure to change the name of the script. Chains. Change harvestable one to harvestable two. Change dirt one to dirt two in the second line. You're gonna change this to harvestable two. Change watered one to watered two. And so on and so forth. All right. And save that. It's pretty simple. Now once you're done creating all of those scripts, go to events. You're gonna go to your seed events and change the start to examine. Change the apply to seed harvest one. You're gonna do the same thing for the other uh, seed events. So go to seed number two, do the same thing, change start to examine, and then for the apply, it's going to be seed harvest number two. Now we're almost done. There are some minor bugs and glitches that we still have to fix. What we're going to do now is create a script called enter farm. And the purpose of this script is to refresh or, or uh, render all of the uh, uh, seed events, all of their models. Basically, if we didn't have this script, the models would not appear in the game, so the vegetables and the plants, they would all be invisible. What we're going to do is go to script, call script, seed, control. It's just going to be one line, really. So seed control is the script that loads all of the graphics for the seed events. 
And once you're done creating that, go to uh, Scripts Events. You're going to create a new event called Enter Farm. It's a system event, so for type, select System. For the Apply, select Enter Farm. Go to the World Organization. Go to the Farm. Go to the Script tab, and right here where it says Enter Map, you're going to select Enter Farm. And save that. Okay, so... Now let's... Let's see... Let's go to Game, Party Members... Go to your main character. Go to... Custom, I think? It's custom. Ability. Go all the way down to where you see an ability called Next Day. This is an ability that we created in a, a previous uh, part of this tutorial. What you're going to do is move the slider up one so that the number is one. Basically what we're doing is we're giving the, the uh, character the ability. This ability right here is for debugging purposes only. I don't know if I mentioned that, but what this does is it simulates a day passing by. Most likely it won't be in the final game, but since we don't have a day and night cycle, the only way to do it for now is to simulate a day passing by by using that ability. So anytime you want to simulate a day pa passing by, all you have to do is use the ability called Next Day. Let's save that. Let's go to Scripts... Plant Model. And what I'm gonna do is delete this right here where it says Vertical Move plus 16. I added that in a previous part of this tutorial, but actually it causes more problems than it's worth. You know, really, I don't know what this is supposed to do, but I'm gonna delete it. It's actually not needed, so make sure to delete that. If you don't delete it, it's gonna cause some serious bugs. Uh, let's see... Oh yeah. Right here where it says script branch condition days past equals one. Anytime, uh, it, uh, I'm not sure how to explain this, but if you have a plant that grows in one day, make sure that where it says condition temp days past equals one, change that to greater than or equal to one. I'm not sure if it will cause any bugs if you have it set up as equal one, but to avoid any possible bugs, I'm changing it to greater than or equal to one. It just makes sense that way. Alright, and also, in the previous part of this tutorial, I mentioned that these two lines right here where it says vertical move, those don't work. So what we have to do is copy these lines right here where it says condition variable temp days past equals one, all the way down to condition end. You're going to copy that and save, update data and exit. Create a new script. I'm gonna create... I'm gonna create a script called Turnip Model, and what this is going to do is determine what the model for the event will be. We're gonna paste what we copied. It's gonna say temp days equals one. In fact, we might not need this. Although, right here where it says object model, I'm actually going to copy and paste it up here outside of the condition and then delete it. Delete the one that's inside of the condition. 
and I'm gonna uncomment this so it should say vertical move 12. I'm gonna copy these three lines right here, paste it, the very bottom, and then instead of temp days equals one, it's gonna say temp days is greater than or equal to two. So if it's two days or or older than two days, then it's going to go up to 17 out of 16, which is right above the soil. And that should be it. Your script... If you're creating a... A plant that changes over time, this is the type of script that you would create. If you want to... If you want to make it so that the plant grows in a greater amount of days, like, uh, this turnip grows in only two days, but if you want it to grow in three days, and you want it to look different for every day that passes, what you can do is just copy these three lines, paste it, you know, do something like this. So instead of, you know, this would be equal to two, and then this one would be greater than or equal to three, and then you would change vertical move so that when when a day passes by, the event looks like it's growing. Looks like it's physically growing. I'm gonna delete this because I only want it to grow in two days. So I'm gonna change this back. I don't know if that makes any sense. If you need help with that, you can message me. Now what you need to do, we have the turnip model script, now you have to go to plant model and delete where it says temp days past equals one, all the way down to temp days past is greater than or equal to two, right down to the condition end. So you're going to delete all that. Right in the middle of that, you're going to call script. You're going to call turnip model. There's one more thing that I need to do. Let me go back to the turnip model script. And change. Uh, we have to call a script called now harvestable, I believe, which is the script that makes the event harvestable. So on the very last day, this, this condition right here is checking to see if it's as old as the plant could possibly be, or older. So once it's fully grown, now we have to call the script called Now Harvestable, which makes the event harvestable. And save that. And I think we're pretty much done. Let's test play. I'm gonna... Oop! Ah, oh, man! Why did I do that? Shit. Let's test play. Take two. Make sure not to destroy the hoe and equip it. Okay, that works. I'm gonna put a turnip seed on the thing. And a mushroom seed on the other one. And... I'm only gonna water the turnip and let's go to the next day and see what happens. Excellent! We didn't water this seed, so it didn't change. It is still a seed. I'm gonna water this again and water this as well. Let's go to the next day. Alright! That works. Let's equip the hoe. These two should now be harvestable, so when I interact with them, that should go away. It should... It should end up in the bag. First and foremost, if if the bag is full, it's going to go into this inventory. And we can harvest that as well. Now what we should be able to do is hoe the soil again. There we go. And I don't have any seeds, but I can water the soil if I want to. That should be the end of this tutorial. Finally, I'm so happy that it's done. Also, one more tip. That vertical move 16 out of 16, this, anywhere that you see 
vertical move 16 out of 16, it should actually be 17 out of 16, because 17 out of 16 is right above the soil, 16 out of 16 is clipping into the soil by one unit. It's not a big deal, in my opinion, but if you want to make it look good, I would advise you to change that to six, uh, 17 out of 16. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking with me. I know it's been a rough ride. Uh, eight total... Uh, eight total... Uh, videos in all. I'm just gonna make sure that I have these. Yeah, 17 out of 16. Let me test it again. And put a seed down. That doesn't look right. That looks like 16 out of 16. Wait a minute. Seed motion? Seed model? Hmm. Maybe, maybe it is 17 out of 16, I don't know. But anyway, I will see you later. Thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing. See you later. One thing that I forgot to show was what happens when you neglect to water your plants. I'm going to show you right now. Let's go to the next day. And your plants should be dead if you, if you forget to water them. And you can equip your hoe and harvest them. In my bag, I have a dead plant. Also, one more thing that I sort of forgot to mention is that when you put a seed down on your uh, dirt, notice how there is a seed above the character's head for a split second, like right now. Did you see that? That's a glitch that I don't know how to fix. Although I know for a fact that there is a way around that, because in my original uh, game with the farming scripts, I was able to get rid of that glitch somehow but the reason why I'm not able to do it in this tutorial is because the scripts in this tutorial is very, very different from my original game. So unfortunately, I don't know how to get rid of that glitch. Hopefully you'll be able to figure it out. It's not a big deal. In fact, it's a very minor glitch. But anyway... Thank you for watching. See you later.